Hey, what's up guys? Here's another video I have uh, for you today. As you can see from the title and from the thumbnail, uh, the topic is, is going to be about friends. And the reason why I wanted to do this topic is, is well, I know many of you just started school, or you're about to start school. Some of you guys are going to go to high school for the first time. Uh, some of you guys are going to middle school for the first time. Some of you guys are just going to a completely different school. Some of you guys have moved. And so the topic of making friends and like what friends we should really get close to, I think is a very important topic for you to I guess really meditate on it and bring it before the Lord. And so the, the title for today, as you can see, is How Close Should I Be With Unbelieving Friends? And so what I want to do is I want to just go over five different verses that I, I hope will really give us some guidance when it comes to making friends and what kind of friends that we should have and, and really, I guess, specifically how we should be friends with unbelievers. And so the first verse that I want to go over, it comes from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. And that says, one who is righteous is a guide to his neighbor, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Okay, and so what can we gather from this verse? It says, uh, the righteous person becomes a guide. How is that possible? Well, uh, the righteous person has the word of God planted in their heart. The righteous person has the word of God renewing their mind. And so because these things are happening, the righteous person can actually be a guide. Um, I think the opposite is true of the wicked person. They lead them astray, right? Uh, in essence, they're spiritually blind. And so you can't have the blind person. Um, I mean, of course, like if you really want to go through with like the illustration, some blind people are really good guides. Like they know their way around like this, the city or whatever it might be. Um, we're just saying in general, especially if this is a uncharted territory, a blind person typically uh, would have a really hard time leading people uh, through uncharted territory, a place they've never been before, a place they, they have no idea what's coming up ahead. And so the wicked person leads people astray. They lead their neighbor astray. They, you can, they can even lead the righteous astray if the righteous person is not careful. The second verse I want to go over comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And uh, this verse to me is, is maybe one of the most important verses of this whole discussion. Uh, but this verse also can help you in the discussion of should I date or marry an unbeliever? Okay. So 2 Corinthians 6, 14 says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawless, lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? And so what do we see there? In this verse, uh, Paul is talking about, I would say at the life level, at the life level, we cannot be yoked with an unbeliever. Uh, if you don't know what a yoke is, just in short, uh, this is a picture of like the two oxen with that contraption that keeps the oxen together uh, so that their efforts moving forward and, and doing the plow uh, would be in, in unison and, and their efforts would be combined, right? And so at a life level, you can't be yoked with an unbeliever. Why? Because at a life level, we're living two completely different lives. He even goes so far as to say what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or, or what fellowship has light with darkness. These are two opposing forces, two completely different directions. And so at a life level, you cannot be yoked with an unbeliever. Okay, moving on to our third verse, we have 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. And this one says, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. I like what Paul is saying here. There's a lot of wisdom in just that short verse uh, because what he's saying he's saying don't deceive yourself to think that that's not true and i think we often do that we think no i am i'll be totally fine like i'm a very strong christian and i have good morals and so it doesn't really matter who i'm around uh, i'm gonna be fine uh, paul says you're deceiving yourself if, if that's what you think um bad company does ruin good morals and so if we put this in the context of friendship uh what what paul would say is when you have bad company, and we can, we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means to have company uh, with people, uh, but when you have bad company, it would be inevitable that your good morals would be uh, eroded over time. Like you would, your good morals would change and shift, and there'd be compromise over time as you keep bad company. Okay, so I, I kind of want to synthesize just those first three verses really quick. What can we gather from those th first three verses about being friends with unbelievers? I think at the life level, uh, we cannot think that, uh, you know, I'm the same as this unbelieving friend. And like uh, at, the, at the life level, we're like heart to heart on the same page. Uh, that just is simply not true. Uh, if you're a new believer, if you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, then you have a fundamentally different life. Uh, you've been made new, you've been made alive, you've been given sight. And so you're a different person compared to your unbelieving 
friend. And we're not just talking about differences in personality. We're talking about a huge, uh, amazing, massive difference uh, in your spirit, right? You're, you're alive in the spirit. They are still dead in their sin. And so we have to recognize that. And I think the other thing that we have to recognize is that uh, the deeper we go with unbelieving friends, and and if you only have unbelieving friends, then I really would say you're you're falling under that last verse of having bad company. That just means the company is just the people that are consistently around you. And if the people consistently around you um, are only unbelievers and not Christian brothers and sisters, then you're definitely in danger of having your good morals, your convictions eroded over time. But I don't want you to think that we cannot be friends with unbelievers. Of course, that's not true. And so let me share two more verses that will help us to really frame and think about what kinds of friendships we should have with unbelievers. And so the first one comes from Matthew 28, 19, which says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In order to carry out the Great Commission, we have to spread the gospel. In order to spread the gospel, I would I would say and I would argue that you're going to have to make a lot of a lot of different kinds of friendships and acquaintances and and connections with unbelievers, right? Yes, there is like the one-off time that you share the gospel with someone and they can come to believe. But for the most part, for many of our sharing, for much of our sharing of the gospel, it's going to happen through potentially even years and years of sharing the gospel with that same person, building that friendship up, um, you know, being there for them, building up trust. All of those things will happen before they will even believe and then you can make a disciple out of that person. The final verse I want to share with you comes from Luke chapter 7, verse 34, which says, The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. In short, when Jesus was doing ministry here on earth, who were the people that he was spending time with? Uh, in short, he spent time with people like prostitutes and tax collectors and and the people of society that overall were rejected, ostracized, cast out. Um, I do also think, though, I, I don't want us to have some kind of concept of Jesus just spending time with sinners and, and they're just sinning around him and he's just totally fine with all their sin and, uh, and that's it. No, uh, these were people that Jesus was actively calling to repentance. He was actively calling them to come after him and, and follow him, be his disciple, believe in him, right? And so, uh, yes, he spent time with sinners, uh, but it wasn't a passive thing. He spent time with sinners um, and called them to right relationship with God and called them to lay aside their, their sin, lay aside their, uh, their past, whatever it might be, their job, uh, in order to follow him. And so what do we do with all this, right? Um, of course, my encouragement is you should be friends with unbelievers. That's just a given, right? Uh, but I do want to caution you. I do want to encourage you as well as a, as a youth pastor, um, and I'm really kind of saying this to young people, maybe even young Christians, uh, you do have to really be careful with the company that you're keeping. If your best friend, friends and your closest friendships are with all um, unbelievers, I'd be really worried for you. I'd really feel like you're in danger of having your good morals corrupted, uh, having your convictions eroded over time because, and that's not even something that they're actively trying to do. Sometimes, yes, it is. They're really trying to come after you and, and, and you know, they actively hate Christianity. That can happen. Uh, but most of the time, it's just them being themselves and you being around them, uh, which will cause you to come to a place of compromise. And so I really do want to caution you. If your closest friends are unbelievers, uh, be careful. Be really, really careful. God may even ask, I wouldn't put it past him because it's happened to me in my life. He may ask you to set aside your unbelieving friends for a season. He may ask you to distance yourself uh, from them for a season. Uh, or he just might ask you to invest a lot more in your uh, Christian brothers and sisters and that fellowship and that friendship to make sure you're really solid uh, so that you, you don't have your morals compromised. You don't have your convictions eroded. And so I hope that makes sense. I hope this is helpful for you as you go into the school year. In all things, pray. You know, pray for wisdom, pray for discernment, have these conversations, talk to your pastor, talk to your parents about, you know, your friend life and all of these different things. It can get really complicated, uh, but I know that the Lord will supply you with strength and wisdom and compassion and love. And so he's going to be there with you. If you like the video, go ahead and like it. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber, uh, share the video, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, but that's it for today. God bless you. Love you. Peace.